sensible design choice, or just catering to noobs? Hey folks, Matt Eaton here, Scholar Gladiatory. Now, many of you are familiar with cookeries from my channel because you'll know I'm a big fan. In fact, this video isn't cookery specific at all. This is just a general observation on the design of weapons. And this could be modern knives, it could be uh, Asian weapons like the tulwars and uh, katanas and wakazashis behind me. It could be European medieval weapons. It could be ancient world, Greek and Roman, Egyptian weapons as well. Now, one of the things I often talk about on my channel is hand guards. Now, the reason I've grabbed a cookery um, is that these don't have hand guards. We'll talk a little bit, a bit more about that in a second. But we're going to talk generally about how hand guards aren't always there to protect the hand in the way that you might obviously think. Many of you watching this channel will know that. Uh, and also that in the modern world, I think we sometimes fixate on hand guards because of modern cultural bias, and also because we don't really understand how to use those specific tools, uh, certainly in the, maybe in some cases, limited ways that they were used historically or ethnographically. Um, I just want to mention, incidentally, these cookeries are awesome. Um, I've got a fairly decent collection of cookeries, as you know. Uh, if you're interested in seeing my cookery videos and you haven't done already, just search for cookery uh, under my uh, videos and you will find a whole bunch more videos on cookeries. But this specific example is from the Nepalese cash, uh, which came out of Nepal in the early 2000s um, from uh, with Atlanta Cutlery and um, also IMA as well. Um, I'll stick a link below if you're interested in getting one of these. It is, it has to be said, an ever dwindling supply, despite the fact that thousands of these came out of Nepal with that Nepalese cash. These were 100% authentic and used by the uh, Nepal um, army, by the Gurkhas, and um, they are traditionally made and they're a really great re resource. So if you're interested in getting one of these, I highly recommend you check out that link below because as I say, they are gradually running out. They're not gonna last forever. So I'm very glad I've got a couple of these and I think I'm probably gonna get a few more uh, before all the good ones go. Um, but. Back to the main topic of the video, the fact is that a lot of people in the modern world will look at something like this and go, I can improve that by adding a handguard onto it. Now, this isn't a new thing. What I have here, and I have shown this on the channel before, but not for a while, it's quite a lot, probably a couple of years ago now, um, is a cookery with a handguard on it. Now, I've noticed I'm actually talking to a couple of modern cookery manufacturers uh, today who are out in Nepal making cookeries the traditional way, and they get lots of custom requests for customers orders where people essentially look at a form of traditional cookery but then they make changes to it to suit their modern whims. There's nothing wrong with that. This isn't a video criticizing that or anything else. I think that's actually a really cool idea because it's continuing the tradition, continuing the evolution of the uh, cookery. Uh, and this happened before. As I mentioned, this is a probably end of the 19th century or early 20th century, um, essentially probably made for a European, probably British, as a hunting knife. So it's someone who was in India who wanted a big old hunting knife for going hunting tigers or boars, pig sticking, doing whatever they were doing. Um, and they wanted a, a, a bush knife, a, a hunting knife. And so they thought, well, cookeries are awesome. But they made a few changes to it, which I've talked about in previous videos. Obviously, it's a uh, almost a, a Bowie knife, European style hunting grip, as is found on lots of um, Anglo-Indian British Empire hunting knives. Then you've got a little ferrule at the top, which is a, a particularly European style. You've got a, um, you'll notice it's like a letter S, um, guard, which you find on a lot of hunting knives, um, particularly from the British Empire of that time. And then there's even an adaptation to the blade, apart from the fact that it's kind of bigger than normal, to make it potentially suitable for thrusting by adding a full sedge on the spine. And you'll notice, of course, that a traditional cookery is um, thick and completely blunt on the back, so it only has an edge on the front. Um, whereas this one, it, although it's not sharpened on the full surge, it's given a spear point, so you could use it for thrusting. Now, why did they add a guard to it? Well, they added a guard to it partly because they weren't Nepalese, almost certainly. They were someone who was used to using a hunting knife, and from the shape of the blade, we assume that they were planning at some point to maybe stab something with it. So a hand guard in that situation is a pretty good um, thing. Uh, if you're not trained in the use of cookeries, number one, Secondly, if you're going to use it as a stabbing implement, then it's good to prevent it as a hand stop. Uh, sorry, to add it as a hand stop. And you'll notice that with some of the Japanese swords behind me, 
although they although they have small suba or handguards in fact i've got uh, an antique one here although they've got small handguards these aren't guards in the way that we often think about uh, being a handguard with European swords, such as a sabre guard or a rapier hilt or whatever, um, in that they do provide some degree of protection from an opponent's blade, certainly if it slides down your own blade. But by and large, that handguard is perhaps there as a hand stop, it's to prevent your hand from going up onto the blade. And in fact, they don't provide an awful lot of protection to the hand at all, certainly not against direct attacks. And in fact, uh, in Japanese martial arts, there are direct attacks at the hand and at the arm that completely bypass the handguard. The handguard doesn't offer any protection in that regard. And your protection of your uh, digits and your limbs in that, um, in that situation is completely dependent on your swordsmanship skills and your you know, moving, essentially. Your distance, your timing, and putting your uh, hands out of harm's way. So you don't rely on a handguard uh, for hand protection in that sense, but handguard nevertheless serves other purposes. So when we look at something like a cookery, is it a good idea to add a handguard? Well, quite simply, if you aren't particularly adept at using a cookery in the 19th and earlier centuries fashion, which frankly we don't know an awful lot about, we've got basic descriptions of how cookeries were used in the 19th century and earlier, but we don't know a huge about. But what we can say is clearly handguards weren't important to them. They knew about handguards because the Nepalese had handguards on the Kora, which is the native sword, and they had access to talwars and other types of sword as well. Um, and indeed, once they started interacting with the British military, they had access to Western style sabres as well. But nevertheless, the cookery, they never regarded that this needed a handguard. With a couple of exceptions, very occasionally, you do find sword hilted cookeries. Absolutely. So you do find like a talwa hilt, for example, or even a kanjar hilt sometimes on a cookery. Um, although by and large, it's regarded that these are for Indians rather than for Nepalese. So the typical cookery wasn't regarded as needing a handguard. Now, why is that? Well, a number of things, okay? On a simple, um, a simple kind of overview, it's because the way that the cookery was used didn't require a handguard. So number one, it is a short weapon uh, that you are not usually getting into any kind of blade on blade contact with an opponent with an edged weapon. The simple fact is that originally these were used either by themselves or with a shield um, and you come to close quarters very, very quickly where a handguard is protecting your hand is just not a particularly important thing because it's a big chopping knife. Secondly, these weren't really used to stab with as far as we can tell. They were used to uh, slice and chop with. Okay, so despite the fact they do have a point on here, they never really accentuated uh, the requirement for that to be a particularly sharp point. And as I've pointed out in previous videos, most traditional cookeries have a form of rib around the middle of the grip. Now what that does is when you're holding the cookery correctly, the bottom two fingers lock in under that rib and prevent the hand from sliding up. So even if you do stab someone with it, uh, it's very unlikely, certainly if you're gripping it correctly, that the hand can slide up the grip onto the blade because you've got that rib in the middle of the grip, which some people find uncomfortable. Now, the funny thing is, in uh, the later 19th century and into the 20th century, a lot of Westerners didn't like that rib in the middle of the grip. They found it uncomfortable, and so they did away with it. And in doing away with it, it makes having a cross guard necessary. Um, so, you know, it's sometimes you have to understand why a weapon is precisely designed that way to understand why certain elements of it are designed that way. And the things have to in interconnect, it's a system, okay? So, quite simply, when you get things like this with a handguard on that are not traditional to that type of weapon, it is usually indicative of the fact that either this weapon is being used by someone who's essentially a noob to that weapon, someone who doesn't really understand the traditional use of that weapon, um, or it's a, uh, an affectation from their culture, okay? Um, so it could be just simply because, because they come from a culture that has handguards on their hunting knives, they want a handguard on their hunting knife. They might not necessarily need it. They might perfectly know how to use a cookery, but they just want a handguard anyway. Or finally, it's because they've taken a traditional implement like this and they're going to use it in a different context and in a different way, and now a handguard becomes necessary. You could extrapolate this to things like the D-guard um, Bowie knife uh, from the uh, Confederate side during the US Civil War as well, and various other weapons throughout history. Uh, and then if we take another example, um, the uh, Kyugunto, the Japanese sword which has a sabre-style 
guard on an otherwise, more or less, otherwise a Japanese style sword. In that case, it's more to do with the fact that they're trying to look like, they've got uniforms that look like European uniforms, so they're trying to look like European sources, so uh, uh, European forces, uh, and try and modernize and mechanize in an age when, in the Meiji era, where the uh, Japanese military was trying to, well, was becoming a modern military with battleships and Gatling guns and everything else. Um, so, there are many reasons why you sometimes get a seemingly inappropriate thing like a guard on a bowie knife or a D guard on a um, katana uh, that are explained by numerous means. Are they necessary? Well, if you're using it a new way, possibly yes, they are necessary, but sometimes they're not necessary. And what I would say is the good old humble traditional ways of making, it could be a kukri, it could be a barong, it could be um, a katana, it could be anything. You don't have to upgrade or change a weapon that's perfectly adapted for using in a traditional way if you use it in a traditional way. But you have to know what that traditional way is and you have to learn it, of course. And once you have done and you've understood the full system of that weapon, then you don't necessarily need to change anything about it at all for it to continue being an effective tool or weapon. I hope this has been thought provoking. I'll see you again soon back on the channel for another video. Cheers, folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.